Hi there. Uh, this is Jonghyun from Seoul, Korea at Yonsei. Uh, I'm actually recording my third video on uh, literature and culture. Recently, I am reading more books on films and theories. Uh, in the meantime, I discovered this name, Andrew Vezen. Have you ever heard of this name before? Well, if you're already familiar to this name, then you can be a judge of what I say in this video. Uh, if you're not, then why don't you open yourself to the introduction of his realism uh, today that I will make in this video. Uh, let me share the screen. This is Bazin. Yeah, as you see, he was born in 1918, right, it's kind of old school. Uh, he was born in the late year of World War One, I, I think, and uh, when the many years um, in his life uh, during World War II. So his war experiences uh, affected to his obsession of realism. Maybe because of these war experiences in his life, he was obsessed by this idea that we need to uh, record our human history of this world more objectively. Mm. As you see, yeah, he lived such a short life. Uh, but if you stay with me in this video, you will know that uh, he achieved many great things in his short life. His ideas were collected under this title, What is a Cinema? These serial books uh, were published by uh, University of California. Uh, the article that I'm going to talk about uh, is in volume one. Um, it's called The Anthology of the Photographic Image. I think this is one of the most important articles uh, as it opens his uh, all these arguments on realism and cinema. Uh, well, volume one also has many other interesting articles such as the evolution of the language of cinema or I like painting and cinema. Volume two also has many fun readings such as an aesthetic of reality and one of my favorite is actually marginal notes on eroticism in the cinema. So that was about his book, uh, What is the Cinema? Hmm. The Anthology of the Photographic Image. Uh, according to a renowned uh, and influential French film critique and theorist, Andrew Bazin, human desire for realism stems from the history of making mummies in the Egyptian era. He interprets the origin of human paintings and sculptures as a reaction to a kind of resemblance complex. Uh, even in the world of cinema, which he collectively calls plastic arts, the psychological desire of humans for mummifying an attempt to counteract uh, the stream of time has unveiled. So his article, uh, in his article, there exists important two concepts. Uh, firstly, it is about the ancient Egyptians mummifying. Secondly, it is about the embalming time in cinema. Well, of course, these two concepts have uh, an interface, but also at the same time, these two concepts were distinguished by Bazin uh, in terms of its fundamentally different goals. I mean, uh, Egyptians mummifying, this is a craving for eternity. And embalming time in cinema is a concept that freezes the present moment to show it to the audience. So Egyptian mummifying is uh, the concept of the continued existence of the corporeal body, or it is about the reality of death by preserving uh, flesh and bone. And these two concepts were applied to the film and summarized into this phrase, embalming time. So embalming time, according to him, it is the presentation of life uh, by a representation of life. Well, uh, well for me, uh, in mummifying, the dead body is an easier concept to follow, uh, but embalming time is more complicated uh, and sophisticated idea because how 
how do we embalm time? How do we represent someone's life? But in a sense, this is, we already were familiar to these concepts uh, because uh, famous modernists already suggested that the concept of embalming time or embalming someone's life uh, through, the, through their topics such as James Joyce novel or Virginia Woolf's novel also contains these important issues. So what I discovered in Bazin is he's re-questioning and uh, 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 rethinking of the important uh, issues in modernism within the boundary of postmodern uh, circumstance. So the embalming time technique corresponds to the realism of cinema. Uh, uh, it allows the viewers to experience the following three documentary values, which I'm going to explain more in the successive later three slides. Uh, the documentary value uh, that occurred in the photographic image of each scene along with the plot and theme. So uh, uh, well, along with the plot and theme, what we, we'll, what we witness uh, is the documentary value in realistic representation of realism in cinema. So Andrew Bazin's cinematic realism of embalming time it induced us to focus on the object living in the present time and space. We finally concentrate on the model. Uh, it centers our attention to the object selected by the camera that exists in reality, but has not been seen easily to our eyes. Thanks to this realism in the film, we finally see the object as the subject. I think Bazin's uh, concept of realism of embalming time is going to be hugely important for a minority discourse or subculture studies because what we see, I mean, we know there exist people who are invisible in our reality, but because of the uh, choice of the camera because of the personality of the photographer when uh, when they bring those invisible beings in front of our eyes through the camera, then we finally uh, will have a chance to really see them as a uh, subject. So this is the moment of object a uh, reborn as subject in the representation of reality in, in film. And uh, he, it, uh, Bazin's realism of embalming time, this concept, it produces a giving dramatic expression to the moment. It invites us to a kind of psychic force dimension. Cinematic realism leads us to the sighting of an aesthetic quality of objective scene that is inadvertently uh, overlooked in reality or does not give rise to the will of discovery. The, uh, the discussion is the continuation of my previous page. I mean, uh, when the object position in the frame, uh, in the certain position or under the certain angle or uh, with the combination of colors or light uh, or uh, with all these combinational factors of uh, artistic representation of reality, the scene will finally will produce the aesthetic quality or a certain type of aestheticism of realism in cinema, then that kind of aesthetic element will give the dramatic expression to the moment or a kind of psychic force dimension. So we finally have chance to see this object as a subject. So this is what he uh, explained and the concept of uh, uh, subjectivity in objectivity. Bazin's conclusion of cinema, embalming the time, that cinema is also a language. This cinematic reading of reality zeroes in on a re-representing of anthology. When we are exposed to the extraordinary reading of image of reproduced 
uh, reality, we encounter the protagonist living in this likeness and ultimately see the man's existence. This cinematic resemblance can explain one's life to us. And when, when this ontological reading is a successful, the protagonist is transformed from the inconspicuous object to the subject of truth. So uh, the relationship between subject and object is not all about his realism. Uh, his fundamental goal of arguing realism of embalming time was to teach us the uh, the language, the cinematic language that we can read the subject of truth. Um, so, well, that was all about my introduction to uh, Bazin's idea of embalming the time. Well, what I want, what I want to suggest to you is that well, things sound very complicated. Uh, maybe you you think that, well, I do not understand the ideas that I explained in, through these slides, but why don't you connect the ideas uh, um, that I introduced to, to you today with uh, the some scenes or movies that you watched before then we'll, things are going to be much easier to understand. Well, right after this video, I have to go to prepare for my fourth video. Then until then, I have to say uh, it's a so long or goodbye. Bye.